1 John 2 verses 15 through 20 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. Today I want to focus on verse 18. Look at this phrase. Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. The point here is this. If John states it is the last hour, when he wrote this, you can imagine how close it is now. If it was the last hour when John said that, by now we are definitely in the last minute or seconds. This is the Apostle John's warning to the last generation. The Antichrist is coming. There are those who believe that the Antichrist is here on earth already, that he has already been born. I don't know if that's true, but what I do know is that we are moving close to when he will be revealed. The Antichrist as a person is coming, and according to the Word of God, the Antichrist is not coming alone. The Word of God tells us that his spirit is already here, and is at work today preparing the way for his arrival, raising up false prophets and teachers. It is important to highlight that these false prophets will not come with horns on their heads, as we expect. They will come in the manner of the true prophets as wolves in sheep's clothing, calling themselves Christ followers and seeking whom to deceive. The false prophets are indeed followers of Christ, but they are not followers of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. They are follower of Christ, the Antichrist. Matthew 24, verses 4 through 5 and 11 says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. The very first attribute of the spirit of the Antichrist is deceit, as shown in Matthew 24, 4-5. It says, Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. As believers, we need to be aware that deceit is one of the signs of the last days and the spirit of the Antichrist. A lot of people will spring forth calling themselves Christ or followers of Christ when they are not. We live in an age of great deception. We live in an age where people call Jesus Lord, but they do not do the things he says. Luke 6.46 says, now why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? We live in an age of great deception, in an age and society which has created a Jesus who does not demand you to repent, a Jesus who does not speak of hell, a Jesus who does not speak of sin, a Jesus who allows you to live with any kind of immortality and fleshly desire you please. This is not the Jesus of this Bible. The Jesus of this Bible preaches on righteousness and holiness. The Jesus of this Bible demands you to depart from your unrighteousness. The Jesus of this Bible demands you to depart from all iniquity. The Jesus of this Bible demands you to depart from all wickedness. The Jesus of this Bible demands you to depart from all mischief. The Jesus of this Bible instructs you to deal with sin swiftly and decisively. Matthew 5, 29 through 30 says, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. In these two verses I've just read, here, Jesus uses a figure of speech and did not speak literally. Unfortunately, some have taken it so, and have mutilated themselves in mistaken efforts in the pursuit of holiness. In other words, what Jesus is saying is, deal with sin swiftly and decisively. 
Don't flirt with sin. Deal with sin swiftly and decisively. These are the words of Jesus himself. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now, if these people are coming and are not of Christ, who are they of? They are of the Antichrist. Who else but the spirit of the Antichrist can pump false doctrines into the church? Who else but the spirit of the Antichrist can allow a congregation to sit and wallow in their sins and never once hear a message on repentance? Who else but the spirit of the Antichrist can allow churches to openly promote sin? Who else but the spirit of the Antichrist will attempt to discredit Jesus Christ? 1 John 4, 3 says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Several other Bible verses tell us that one is coming to the world whose assignment is to deceive many from believing in Christ. Of course, we see a lot of people playing such roles today. Still, the Bible makes it clear that there is one who is mainly called the Antichrist, the man of sin, the embodiment of iniquity, the lawless one. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1-7 says, Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and a man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. I want to focus on this one verse, verse 7. Allow me to read this verse in different versions for you, starting with the King James Bible. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. The New International Version says, For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And the literal standard version says, For the secret of lawlessness already works. Only the one now restraining will do so until he may come out of the midst. This verse is the reason why the Antichrist has not been revealed yet. There is one who is restraining him currently. The restrainer holds back lawlessness, but he will be removed someday. When he is out of the way, Lawless activities will culminate through the man of lawlessness. But who is the restrainer? Only the Holy Spirit. Only the blessed Holy Spirit. This is why the Antichrist has not appeared yet. He is being held back, waiting for his time. But notice something in this verse the Bible tells us, that his power is already at work. That is the spirit of the Antichrist that John tells us is already in the world. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. I don't know how exactly God will take him away, whether it will be sudden or gradual. I personally think it will be gradual because as I look through human history, I see the power of the spirit of the Antichrist gaining power in this world. With each year passing, lawlessness is gaining wind in the world and in some churches. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The lawless one is coming. Revelation 13, 11 further says, As I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do. We know by this Bible verse that there is a particular creature called the Antichrist, the enemy of Christ. 
But the Antichrist is not designed to come alone. He has a set or crew he'll be working with to imitate God and to deceive people. One major characteristic and objective of the Antichrist is to deceive the very saints of God. When we talk about the Antichrist, we talk about deception. The Antichrist is aimed at fooling people into believing that he is God. As seen in Revelation 13.13, 13, the Antichrist will perform great wonders and signs to deceive people. His foremost concern is to accord the glory that belongs to God to himself by imitating the same works and acts of God and then deceive God's people. Just as God sent his prophets to the world to prepare the way for the coming of Christ and to bear testimony of his coming, in a similar way, Satan is reinforcing his false prophets to deceive the world into believing he is God today. At the coming of the Antichrist, many false prophets and teachers will arise, teaching many heresies and lies to deceive many, just like it's happening at this moment. The Bible says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The knowledge of the truth sets free. Now you know who the Antichrist is, and his mission on earth, and in the life of a believer. Therefore, the response to this knowledge is freedom. Let nothing entangle you anymore, not even the love of the world. And if by mistake you have fallen victim to any lie from the Antichrist in the past, please break free from such lies today. Without a doubt, we will be very ignorant to say the Antichrist is not in operation in the world presently as we speak. The Antichrist and his false prophets have started the process in the world already. His lies and deceptions are flying all around. Therefore, guard your heart with all diligence and, most importantly, watch where you step into. Not all churches are established by God. Some are straight from the pit of hell, operating on strange doctrines and heresies. Be warned. Let the word of God guard you at all times. Know God for yourself, and serve him with your whole heart. Lastly, do not be a desperate seeker of signs and wonders. This is what many believers are seeking today, miracles, signs, and wonders, and by so doing they get entangled. They do not care by whose power it's being done. Once they see miracles, they simply assume God is there. No, not all miracles are from God. Take note of that. It's also been proven biblically that the devil also performs miracles to imitate God and deceive people. A lot of such demonic miracles are present all around today. Therefore, I encourage you to seek after God diligently. Love the Lord with all your heart and shun every distraction and enticement the world is presenting to you. Always remember that your identity is not in the world. But God has given you the most significant approval you will ever need through Christ. Beware of the love of the world, the Antichrist, and his techniques. May the Lord preserve all of us for his second coming. Amen.